What's up guys, just wanted to do this quick video on this uh, Duromax XP13000EH dual fuel generator. I have it uh, hooked up to my 325 gallon home propane tank. Uh, it runs my whole house. Um, I plumbed it in using half inch black line and it goes around my garage and underneath my deck to where it ties in underneath the house. This unit comes with a propane hose. Um, I took the regulator off of it. This is the regulator that comes with it. It threads in on that side and can hook directly up to a tank um, if you want to do that. You can do a 100 pound tank, a 20 pound tank, whatever tank you want. Uh, my father-in-law has two 100 pound tanks uh, put together for his. Uh, this unit comes with the manual on everything on how to put it together and it comes with some tools and stuff. It doesn't come with oil. You have to provide your own oil, 1030 oil. Um, the other thing this unit didn't come with was a charger. Uh, so I went to Harbor Freight and got the Viking 4 amp high frequency charger maintainer. I have it mounted right here um, so when I run the unit I just unplug it. The unit does charge when it is running. Uh, you turn the battery switch to on and anytime the generator is running it does charge the battery so you are going to want to disconnect this charger down here while it's running. Um, I needed the exit for the exhaust to come out this side so I welded in some some pipe to make it come out the front because I do leave this unit in my garage all the time. I just open the door. It's a detached garage. It's not near the house. Um, not that close to the house. Um, the factory exhaust is a back exit. So I just 90 it out of there with some three quarter pipe and then a eight inch nipple and then a 45 and it shoots it out. Um, when I run my generator, I typically open the door up about halfway so the exhaust is shooting out of the garage door and there's plenty of circulation and fresh air. Uh, got this 15 foot 50 amp cable and it plugs right in. The one thing about this generator is this frame sticks out pretty far so I had to grind down the cable a little bit to get this to fit flush. And then it's hooked directly up to this Reliance Controls inlet box. Uh, you just put it in and twist it and it'll lock. Um, I have it strapped because I don't ever move this unit anywhere. And then there's 6.3 Romex that goes to my panel over there with a interlock switch and a 50 amp breaker. All right guys, we're over here at the panel. So this is a square D panel. So I have the interlock switch and a 50 amp breaker. So when the power goes out, you disconnect or you turn this service disconnect off and you slide this plate up and turn your 50 amp breaker on and that'll back feed the whole panel. This isn't my main service panel. My main service panel is on the other side of this panel where my service meter is. And so it's fed directly 200 amps to this panel where it also feeds my shop and then it's fed through to feed the rest of my house. Um, I am on a well, it runs my well no problem. And this unit should run my central heat and air. Uh, I haven't tested it out yet, but it should be a big enough unit. So in the manual, you'll find a list of common appliances and the wattage that it runs. Um, you do have to realize with the dual fuel generator, the if you're running off gasoline, which I've not run this unit off gasoline, the running watts is 10,500 with a surge or peak of 13,000. But if it's propane, you only get 99.75 running watts and 12,350 peak watts. So it's a little bit less power when you're running off propane. But I chose the propane option so I don't have to worry about my wife having to fill it up with gas or anything like that. And she can run it and start it no problem if I'm not home. Um, I attached the propane quick start guide right here for her just in case she forgets any steps. Um, the last time the power went out, she was able to start it and get the whole house running for about five hours um, while I was sleeping because I work graveyards. 
Uh, to get this unit going, you first turn the battery switch on. You're gonna turn the propane, the fuel switch to propane. I have to disconnect this charger over here. Um, then you're gonna come over here where there's a valve and turn the propane on. This unit has a push button start, not a key like the other ones. You just hold it down for one second, it starts to flash. You just switch the unit into storage mode, turn the battery off, and then I turn my valve off here for my propane. Um, this unit, unlike the other units, um, the 10,000, the 12,000, which is, I was going to get the 12,000, it doesn't have the hour meter. This one does have the hour meter. Um, it's only accessible um, if the unit's running, but it gives you the volts, hertz, and hours run. Um, for plugs, it has two GFCI outlets, a twist lock 30, a 50, and then a twist lock um, 120, 30. Um, it's all breaker protected, and it does have a main circuit breaker here. Uh, this unit does have idle control, but you can't use the idle control when you're doing whole house power. This is only good if you're using it on, say, like a job site where you have some items plugged in here that aren't running all the time. It'll idle it down. Um, while the units aren't being used and then when you turn them on it'll kick the generator up and supply the power that you need This generator does come with a backup refill starter if you do need it if your battery is dead uh, The batteries tucked back here behind this panel back here uh, You have to remove this panel to get the battery out um, This bat this generator has uh, low oil alert as well and it does come with a set of tools um, it came with some of these tools but like the funnel wasn't here that it says that it came with uh, these plugins were here the spark plug wrench that kind of stuff that was all here all these tools were here so just no funnel in this kit um, it's pretty easy to put together the only thing that's not attached to the generator when it ships are the wheels and the handlebars for moving it um, my handlebar clears my exhaust just fine so I am able to roll this if I do need it but again it just sits here in my garage because I use this strictly for backup power when the power goes out um, this is the second biggest portable generator that Duramax offers the next one they offer is a V twin 15,000 and it's about more than double the price of this one I paid $1,300 plus tax for this one. Um, I'm out here in California. So this is carbon EPA compliant. And uh, it's already run us for five hours, no problem for one power outage. I was using a different generator for all the PG&E power safety shutoffs. And I just wanted to get something a little bit bigger that was dual fuel for, uh, for any future outages. For overall cost, like I said, the unit's about $1,300 plus tax. The shipping was free. Um, the generator cord came from Amazon. That was about $105. The interlock kit was approximately $75. These Reliance Control Inlet boxes are anywhere from $60 to $80, depending on where you're getting them. The 6.3 Romex I got from my buddy who's an electrician. The breakers, just your standard breaker cost, anywhere from ten to twenty dollars um anytime you go to back feed your panel you need either a transfer switch or one of the interlock kits um i'm not a certified electrician or a gas plumber uh, i'm just giving you this video for information uh, if you have any questions consult a plumber and an electrician one thing to keep in mind when you're looking to possibly hook this up to your home uh, larger propane tank is it needs a minimum PSI of three PSI to run so if you have just a single item on your system currently it may have a lower 
PSI regulator. I have two regulators, one high pressure on my tank and then a low pressure coming into my house. Um, my hot water heater is propane, my dryer is propane, and my range top is propane, and my heat also uses propane, which we don't run. We use a fireplace most of the time. So this unit needs three PSI or more to run. So keep that in mind if you're having issues and you're hooking it up to your tank and it won't stay running, it's strictly a supply issue from your regulator. You need a different regulator and your gas company should be able to help you out with that. Um, anytime you're running propane, you have to use the black pipe. Another thing, if I didn't make it clear, this unit does charge while it is running. However, it does not have a a maintainer for the battery while it's in idle mode or not running. That's why I added the Harbor Freight Viking charger so the battery stays fresh and maintained. Um, so it, it's always ready to go in, in case the power goes out. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below, like and subscribe so you do not miss any future content and hit that notification button. See you in the next video.